Friday. Okay. Do you see what I have in my wine glass? Uh, I have better, that better not be milk. <laughs> it's coffee. <laughs> Tony, look, do you see how red? Red eyes. Do you really have coffee in your wine glass? I had it in my in my hot mama mug, and then I thought to be funny, I had to put it in here just for you. <laughs> I'm just curious out of the people kind of tuning in. Is coffee in a wine glass cheating? Yes or no? Oh, no. It's more elegant. Wine glass cheating. <laughs> Helen, I know you there is coffee in wine glass cheating for a wine down show. That's what <laughs> I want to know. Yeah, that's, that's what we need to know. know. I should have told you it's in a, I should have told you it was an espresso martini. Yeah, no, no. And Doris, uh, hello, hello, hello. So I think people need to let us know if uh, coffee in a wine glass is cheating. But uh, well, did, you, did you at least toast? Because I, I did. Have I did. Okay. I, I have I had four hours of sleep last night and four hours of sleep the night before, so I thought I, I if I drank wine I would just be on the keyboard. Hélène says that it's okay. She says oh. it's good. Jean Francois <laughs> says, What the hell is happening here? It's <laughs> Friday at two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly my point. But it's, it's five o'clock somewhere. somewhere. It's only noon here in Colorado. I made it back safely from Arizona driving, and it was not a good drive. I literally last night thought I was going to die because I was falling asleep at the wheel where I would hit those brrr things on the side of the road and um, pulled over, stayed the night at a little hotel at 1 o'clock in the morning, and um, thus the coffee. Thus the coffee. Well, um, I, I love just your hair. From the hairdressers and my, my stylist Silvana, who does such an amazing job. And this is so funny because apparently she was in the salon last night looking at her appointments for today and she saw me and she went, How can Tony be coming on a Friday? She's got wine down. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just thought was really cool. So I said to her, Yes, and you have to get me out of here on time. On time. Get home for wine down. So, Silvana, thank you very much for getting me out of there on time. And today we are talking about differentiation. And this has just been, well, obviously, it's on my mind all the time. All the time, but yeah. Last week, I have just seen so many fails. And we're not going to talk about the fails today, but so many fails of people who think they're being different and think they're being strategic. And they are just not. They yeah. are just not. So I thought, Gina, because you and I chatted about this during your adventures. During this my week. adventures. I've had an adventurous week, but yeah. Is, is that this week we might try to really give some concrete strategies, some pe some things that people can think about, not just examples, but examples tied into strategies so people can take that away uh, for the week. And, and, and implement. And implement. Don't just think about it. We're going to talk about things you can implement this coming week. Yeah. Yes, because differentiation has the word different in it for a reason. Yeah. There is no such word as betteration. It is <laughs> differentiation, which that means is you actually have to be different. And I'm not talking about being different for the sake of being different. Right, Gina? We're That's talking true. about things that are strategic. And I was listening, actually, while I was getting my hair done today, I was listening to a Harvard Business Review article. And one of the things that he, that the gentleman talked about, I don't remember who it was, um, uh, was that we have to be different in ways that our brand gives us permission for. And that was a whole new thought for me. So different in the way that our brand gives us permission for. And the example that he gave was McDonald's that at some point decided that they were going to serve pizza. Totally Interesting. Because yeah. McDonald's brand does not give them permission to serve pizza. I don't know if there's anybody in, there are several Montrealers online who remember when Canadian Tire decided they were gonna sell food. No the tire tire company. Well, Canadian Tire, which is a big hardware store here in Canada, decided they were going to sell food. Now, when Walmart decided to sell food, that was something their brand gave them permission for. When Canadian Tire decided, well, you know, to sell food. I it think it's interesting because IKEA sells food. Now, I think it works because you know you're going to pass out in the store if you don't have nutrition and a bed to sleep on, so they have both of those. But so, what kind of food does IKEA sell? True. It's all Swiss, Swedish it's meatballs. All, all, not Swiss. It's Swedish. Swedish, yeah. Swiss cheese. Swedish, Swiss yeah. Cheese. 
right? Yeah. So that's so that's what I mean. You need to be different, strategically different, but you mm -hmm. do need to be different. And so that's what today's strategies are about. And and Gina, you had one that you really wanted to share that I think is just so cool. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, do I? I don't yeah. remember what I talked about now to you. Talk about being memorable. <laughs> well, I think it's funny. Hold on. Let me have another drink of coffee. I have another glass of wine. Oh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my thing is we need, I think we remember those who are different. And so I just keep looking at going, how do you make sure that your brand is one that people think of? when they want to first of all do people even know what you do because i think that's part of it too sometimes we remember kind of like commercials or we remember a person we met but we're going yeah i really liked them but i don't remember what they do or right? nothing that they did stood out or their brand is kind of confusing and so you know the whole thing is you have to make sure that your messaging is super clear so people know exactly how they can work with you so that they do remember you when it's time to make those those purchasing decisions and Absolutely. i think so many times there's just the sea of sameness that I mean, in my realm, I'm always looking at content and your marketing and the messaging and so much of it, people say, oh, ours is so unique. Ours is so different. And I see 50 others that are the exact same. So, you know, being memorable to me, you have to stand out, but then yeah. you have to do things that help them remember you, which to me, the repetitive messaging is helpful, you know, and that's yeah. in, in marketing. It's getting that message out over and over so they do remember you. But then there has to be this clarity with it so that they know what you do. Because I I would love, I think an exercise would be just to ask, you know, five people that are random that you're connected with, do you know what I do? Um, because there are some people that go, well, I know you put out great stuff, but I'm not sure. And there's some people I'll look at their profiles and I'll go, I have no idea what they do. So, yeah. And I think I think when you and I were talking earlier, it's kind of like the word differentiation that has the word different in it. Yeah, memory. memory. Oh, I'm stretching the truth just a little bit. <laughs> has the word memory in it, right? Uh, and and that means we have to be creating mem memories. Memories, right? So think about being memorable. Um, the, you know. I become a bit of a buzzword but what it actually means is creating memories and I just need to I just need to, to jump in here uh, yes. Jean-Francois Poulain has told me not to shout uh, because people can hear me well Jean-Francois <laughs> no, I, I shout when I get excited so I'm going to so suggest you turn, turn down your volume and, uh, and, and, and just go with it because at this point in my life I am you know what Wine. She's gonna have you're gonna have many more wine and then she'll wind down and I'll get more coffee and I'll wind up. Um usually my my husband's always tell me you don't have to yell like they're really I in know. another state. We but. get passionate and our voices get loud and, and Bob Bob is uh Bob is uh Bob has joined us. He says he got lost in the IKEA food line, which I, <laughs> I think is funny. That's so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Creating awesome. memories how we create memories which which to me that goes kind of in the last couple of weeks when we've been talking about creating these communities and creating experiences and creating relationships and deepening relationships and to me if we stay on the surface with our marketing with our messaging with our relationships with with our potential clients and our clients of course they're not going to remember us because there's 15 million others that are all vying for their attention. So to me, being memorable, creating those memories starts with going a little deeper with our communities, being consistent with our messaging, but then looking for how do we create experiences that people do think of us first. And to me, that goes into storytelling. I mean, when you tell a great story, which I was listening, you know, I'm always listening to books as I make my drive from Arizona to Colorado and back and forth. And I was listening to Made to Stick again because I read that years ago. So great this book. time I thought, yeah, I'm going to listen to it while I was driving. And um, I mean, just the power of stories, of, of giving the details of a story to really craft a story. And, you know, in the speaking world, I used to always say our stories are like beads and and we 
we have these experiences throughout the day. Maybe we go to Ikea and we have an experience there and we get can lost. write that down. Yeah, we get lost and we write that story down and that's a bead. But if we polish the bead, that means we have to edit the bead and we have to um, craft the story so that it has purpose. It, you know, it really drives home a point and there's actually characters in the story and there's details in the story to make it memorable. Then all of a sudden that bead is ready to be put into your messaging. And, and I look at crafting stories all the time that you, you might have lots of stories, but they may not be ready. You have to polish them and then they're more memorable because we weave in those details that um, stories need. So, I mean, that's kind of a roundabout way, but I think we have to look at that and say, how, I love that. how do people remember us? What, what do they think of when they think yeah. of us and our brand? And I think that that ties in really well with everything. As you say, we've been talking about, about experiences because you know, there, yeah. there, there are several elements to an experience, but for me, an experience is something that happens to you, right? It is how you feel and it creates a story that you feel compelled to share. Exactly. If don't if it doesn't create that story, then it doesn't create something you're compelled to share and it doesn't create a memory. If you don't really remember it, then it doesn't then you don't share it. And we live in a share economy. So I, I think all of us need to be asking ourselves in each of those touch points along the journey, how are we creating memories? Right. How are we? And, you know, if you think about it, I love your beat. And now I just think that's so cool. But if you think about it as a snapshot, right? Yeah. It just, snapshot in the customer journey how would people tell that story and why would that create a memory for them so the example this morning was going in and having Sylvana say to me what are you doing here it's Friday you're on wind down I like that to me is is a memory that is right. memoriable because I know now I mean I always knew that she kind of watched and Doris and the team kind of watch what we do but to walk in and have her know that it was Friday that is memoriable. So yeah. I, how do we cre how do we create those memories? I love that one. Yeah, I do think we have to look at how do we create those memories because for our brands to stand out and be different. I mean, if if you're not different, no one will remember you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I just think it's one of those things we all have to constantly evaluate. Am I really different? I just think we assume we're different. But there are so many out there preaching the same message. In most cases, um, there are some brands that are just truly unique. The experience is that, you know, that brand. I mean, I, I keep going back to Jim Coffee. I mean, he, what he does is so unique as a creating experience. But most of us have brands that are there are lots of competitors out there. So we have to look at how do we create experiences that really stand out, are memorable, um, and that make us different from the the competitors out there. Yeah, and I think there's one of the other things that can sometimes get lost in the um, lost in the crowd here is that there are the businesses whose for whom experiences are their offering. Right. So, so Jim right. Coffee, for those who don't know, Jim does whitewater rafting um, expeditions all over the world, yeah. um, featured in National Geographic, and all of those things. Well. Jim's offering is an experience. Well, Disney's offering is an experience. If you think right. about it in terms of what job Jim's customers want to get mm. done, what they want to get done is the experience. For the rest of us, for many of us, experience is an element of what we're doing, but it's not necessarily our offering itself. So the question is, how do we deliberately design experiences around that that make it memorable? Which is but interesting because I think in a lot of our business, I keep saying a lot of ours, I don't know what everyone's business is, but I look at like as a consultant, as a speaker, as a trainer, as a, a service provider, as marketing, I look at going, you know, that's where we have to get creative. And we talked, we touched on this a couple of weeks ago where we might have to create something beyond what we normally offer, like a pre, Absolutely. you know, whether it's a video, whether it's a, a webinar, whether it's something that we want to say, here's what we want to do with your team before we even get started. Right. And then it's almost like you want to start the experience before because not everybody does that. Or right. what do you do after the experience is over with the purchase right. is made? What do you do after that extends the experience so that the customer has a chance to remember you more? And I would even create some touch points 
months on, you know, keep them going with some scheduled touch points because now the memories have a chance to even go deeper. So I think we have to get more creative when we don't have a brand that is an yeah, experience. And, and, and to your point, memories, um, memories can be created, but then they need to be anchored in something. So your point about, you know, in our work, we talk a lot about before, during and after and what happens after um, and how do you keep those memories going? So, so that's a great right. point. Yeah. I, I wanted to share a few other strategies that um, I think people can can take away and, and think about over the next week how they could implement in their business. Uh, one of my favorite ones, and Gina, you and I have talked about this, is flipping the script, which yeah. is doing exactly the opposite of uh, what most what people expect in the market, in the markets, yeah. right? Most of your competitors are doing and what, what people don't expect. Now, again, going back to the McDonald's example, you don't want to do something that your brand doesn't give you permission to do, uh, but you do want to take advantage of that kind of contrarian approach to things. One of my favorite examples, and I'll put the photo of this in the in the feed when uh, when the show's over, is years ago, um, Kit Kat did a free no Wi-Fi zone, uh, a free no Wi-Fi zone, because everybody's doing free Wi-Fi and Kit Kat did free no Wi-Fi. Now, Clever. if you think about the fact that the slogan for Kit Kat is take a break, right? that is exactly something that their brand gives them permission to do, but it still goes against the grain of what everybody else is doing. Another example that I've always loved, and they're all over the world right now, is the anti-cafe. So instead of building a better coffee shop with different prices or different coffees or different whatever, for those who don't know what the anti-cafe is, you don't pay for what you drink or what you eat. You pay for time. Right. So it's a totally different business model that flips the script. So I guess the question for all of us is, how could we do that in our business? At, at what point in the customer journey could we flip the script and do the opposite of what the competition is doing in a way that's uh, completely congruent with our brand. Well, and you look at even airlines. I mean, it started with Southwest Airlines doing it, and now I've heard it on other airlines where they do the yeah. humorous uh, safety demonstration right. because it's unexpected. People remembered it. People laughed. They listened. Um, now, you know, now, like you always talk about, it, it makes you stand out and you're different until everyone else does it. Everyone else is doing it. You can't, right. you can't just rest on your past successes. But I think looking for ways to do things that are different, but they have to be congruent with your brand. So, yes. you know, you, you have to look at what is our brand and what are we really what is our differentiator? What yeah. is it? You know, and, and we say, well, it's our people. It's this, is that really different? You know, is, is that it? Because if that's it, then what are your people doing to really be different? Because sometimes I think we say we're different to, to justify in our mind that it's done. <laughs> the right. task is done because it's hard to think yeah. of how really can we really create a different experience? Yeah, it really, it really is. And if we, if we go back, I love the example that you brought up of the, um, uh, of the airlines, because once everybody's doing it, then we go back into who's doing it better. Right. right. Who's right. doing it differently. So the initial idea was different. And now we're looking at who's doing it better. And before long, the best of the best will all be doing it. Right. And it will no longer be a differentiator. So, you know, that the whole idea of differentiation is to stay ahead of that curve yeah. and to be constantly thinking about what's next. One of the things that we talk about in our work, and you've heard me talk about it, Gina, is the shelf life of an idea. Yeah. It's like the, uh, uh, the yogurt that's in our fridges that is way past its uh, best <laughs> day, right? And we, and we all have it. We all have it. My family would say I would still make them eat it. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> Jared would still make us eat it. Jared yeah. would still make us eat it. Still um, good. But, but that whole I the concept is when you're coming up with an idea, you already need to know what its best before date is. How True. often will your target audience experience this? Because by the time the unexpected has become expected, it's already too late. So right. we constantly need to be ahead of that curve. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, that, that's the thing. There's no easy button on any of these. It's, you know, it's work, but it's, it's rewarding work because if you can really be different and stand out, you know, how great. I would love to know if anyone in our listening audience, even if, if you're listening on the replay, I would love for you to put in the, the chat, 
Like, can you think of a brand that really is memorable that has been so different in your mind that they stand out? Yeah. Um, you know, even just to put the brand's name or the commercial or the something that what, what did you experience? Because um, it's it's sad that it's hard to think of. I mean, you could think of a handful out of all the businesses out there. I mean, you know, you go, okay, Nordstrom for a long time, and they still have that, um, you know, the urban legend stories, which, again, you hear the, all the stories. You don't know how many of them are true, but people bringing their tire chains back to Nordstrom, and they don't sell tire chains. And people, you know, the 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 stories that were created really set them apart in their customer right. service. Right. Um, but what are some of the everyday ones that we all experience? It would be interesting to hear um, others that really stand out. And I'm even trying to think, have you ever experienced a brand where the people, because we always say our people are our differ differentiators. Are, have you ever, can you think of a brand where you say, it's the people there that really anchor me to that brand? I. I struggle well, with that one because yeah, I think, and I struggle with that one too. And we have a lot of clients who give us that their answer. And my answer to them is, well, your, your toughest competitors, their people are also there. Like, right. If you're amongst the best of the best, and those are the only people we deal with anyway these days, but if you're amongst the best of the best, then, then, then your competitors have got that one down. They've got great people. Um, right. I do think there are brands that take their people further than other brands do. And the two that would come to mind immediately are uh, the Ritz and Zappos. And that is because their teams have this incredible uh, permission level of permission. They understand the brand story incredibly well and they have permission to do many, many things that perhaps other brands don't give their teams permission to do to bring that brand story to life. True. So yes, I, I, I am curious to hear about other brands and the big brands, but I'm almost more curious to hear about um, the smaller brands, the brands yeah. that maybe nobody else in this feed. And I have often talked, and I'm not just doing it because Doris appears to be on the call, um, but the place where I where I go and have gone for, and I don't want to say however many years, um, <laughs> <laughs> that is my hair, my spa, my my whatever. Um, you know, there there's a, a woman on their staff named Marlene uh, who doesn't touch my body at any point during any of the process, but who allows me to book my appointments by email because she knows I don't like the phone and it's just easier for me. And so, in in that sense, in that situation, the the, the people that Doris and and Pierre have on their team are their advantage. So. Right. I, it's, it's what people mean by that. If what they mean by that is their people are their advantage because they do we a really do great this. job, yeah. then give me a break because if your people don't do a really great job, then get out of the way. They shouldn't um, be there. Right. They shouldn't be there. But but if, they're, if their staff truly are different, um, if they truly are um, people who, uh, and this makes my eyes roll or glaze over the, the phrase, go the extra mile, but who are constantly on the lookout to create those memorable moments like Marlene does for me. And, and um, then those are, those are really important. I think your yeah. people can be your companion. And, and that, then that goes to me, I'm going, that goes to your recruiting process. That goes to your training process. I mean, I always use Chick-fil-A as my example and, and our team here, we hear it all the time because I'm going, it's my pleasure. Like, I love that statement. It's my pleasure. It was my pleasure to help you. It was my pleasure to help you. Not no problem. Not, um, you know, some other, I love, so that's a, that's their people delivering that, but they were trained and they were recruited. So yeah. for that. So I think, yeah, that, that's, that can be a differentiator if you have some specific recruiting procedures that help you find people that are right in line with, with, and, and hold up those expectations. If you want my um, own opinion though that that the people are not enough and anybody who would say to me that their core differentiator um, it is their people, is their people yeah. and then uh, then we would need to have a very long conversation over yeah. a couple of glasses of wine because <laughs> and when when the best are competing with the best they have great people too well and i was gonna say and if that really is your only thing that's setting you apart you're in jeopardy because when your people leave what happens to your brand you know, so it has to go deeper than just the people. So you go, you know, how do you make your brand really different? I think it is having to think beyond 
the everyday service that we provide, um, the everyday products that we sell, we have to look at how are we creating an experience that's more of the wow factor um, and and creating memories in the way we deliver the service. And those, I mean, you talk about it all the time, touch points, touch points. It's all about examining those and creating those and crafting those, just like the stories, you know, crafting those experiences like beads to say, what are those points that we come in contact with these with our customers and even before their customers, the potential customers, um, you know, how are you creating wonderful experiences with people so that your brand, even if they never do business with you, your brand is talked about in a way that you want them to be talking about you. Yeah. Bob has, a, thank you, Leslie. Leslie says she likes my hair. Um, it looks amazing. So thank you. shout thank out you, Bob. to Bob, yeah. faithful Bob, um, it has mentioned WestJet uh, employee owners and says it works. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jean-Francois has mentioned Apple, of course, each experience there for him, he says it's good. Um, and, and so, yeah, the, the big brands, mm -hmm. I think, are, 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 yeah, I have my own opinions on Apple, but that's, that's. For and that is interesting because I was thinking the same thing going, it's the interesting their, their products make you want them. But their customer service, I wouldn't put up there. I don't know that, but that's the experience that's created. It's very, you know, it's elite. Yeah, and I would, I would actually almost say there. I mean, I'm so deep into our family, so deep into Apple. I know. Apple, like, to change now would be, and there's lots of great things about Apple, and this is not a show about Apple. But I would agree with Jean Francois that every time I go into an Apple store, I have a great experience. Uh, we have we have the business plan with them. Every time we call, we have a great experience. I, I'm not so sure they're as innovative as they used to be in terms of their products. And it pisses me off that I have to pay eighty five dollars for a new this and another hundred and ten dollars for a new that every time I buy a new Apple because they've made their other things obsolete. But yeah. but that's a, that's a different thing. They certainly, as Jean Francois is right, from an experience point of view, in terms of the um, customer journey experience, if we put the products aside, they cool. do. Yeah really good job and I, I wanted to throw just one more because we're, we're getting close it goes by so fast um, uh, whether whether I'm speaking loudly or not it, it, it still goes, goes by so fast um, I um, you know my son has inherited this Noah too every so often he gets all excited and, oh, yeah and, out, and it's just on the tip of my tongue and then I go no I'm not gonna say that because that is his pure passion just pouring I out love it. And and uh, and you know, roll with the punches. But the third the third thing I wanted to share, or I, I guess it's our fourth strategy by this point, or third, um, is something I call stake your claim. And the, and the reason I wanted to share this one is because so many of the people who listen to Wind Down are smaller entrepreneurs, and they hear us talking about Apple and Nordstrom right. and all of this stuff, and they go, "What the heck? How can I compete with that?" Right. And there's a wonderful story, and I will post this link in the feed after the show. But there's this wonderful story of a small pizza shop in Dubai called uh, Red Tomato Pizza. And uh, Red Tomato Pizza kind of hit the corner on the market till all of these big chains started to come in uh, to Dubai. And then they realized they had to do something that was different. But they didn't have the budget to compete with all of those low cost deals. And how many of us have faced that, right? Big competitors who come in, they've got the cash flow, they've got the flexibility in their margins to be able to drop those prices down. And sooner or later, we spend all of our time trying to figure out how to demonstrate value and, and negotiate price. Um, but what Red Tomato Pizza did is they discovered a pain point in the process that nobody else had identified yet, which was that in Dubai, there are over 200 languages spoken, number one. And number two, there's like the highest per capita pizza takeout pizza order in the world. Everybody loves takeout pizza in Dubai. So if you put those two facts together, you can imagine that calling to order a pizza is a nightmare. Yeah. Because so many, there's so many languages. Anyway, the moral of the story is they took about, I think it was $9,500. They created this little magnet that was said push for hunger. They sent it out with their pizzas. And when you got this magnet, you registered your order online. And from then on, all you ever had to do was push the button. Don't ask me how it worked. Push the button that was on your fridge and your pizza arrived 30 minutes later, piping hot in front of your door. Um, yeah. Deliveries increased 500%. They got something like 
12,000 mentions on social media or something. It was, it was, it was phenomenal what this one thing. So if I have any advice for anybody out there who's saying, I can't compete with the big guys. I don't have the budget. We don't just stake your claim. Find one moment one in the area. Country, one moment. You do not have to do it all. You just have to find that one moment where you can solve a pain point for a customer and then you look like a hero, right? Gina, you, and you, you can look like own it. Yeah. And you and can you own, own it. Exactly. You can own that moment. Red tomato pizza owns the yeah. ordering moment in the pizza. So it's funny. Box. You know, it's funny. I have three of those buttons, not for pizza, but Amazon gives you those buttons. buttons. Yeah. I, and I never use them, but for pizza, I would use it. Yes. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's not that exciting when I have to order laundry soap. And I would guess, actually, <laughs> since this whole thing with red tomato pizza goes back at least six or seven years, that Amazon might have been inspired by yeah. red tomato pizza because that uh, could be don't go back that far. No, they don't. It's only been a few yeah. years. Um, yeah. yeah, we we need to we need to stake our claim. We really need to be creating these memories to stand out and be different with the potential customers and customers that we serve. We have to make an effort and it can't just be one and done. Yes. No. And, and that, that's, that's it. We have to keep, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody listening knows about the, the S curve, but if you do, the whole concept of the S curve is by the time your idea gets to, I should probably be doing it backwards anyway, gets to the top of the S, um, <laughs> you know, you need to, you need to know what you're doing next. Because right. by the time the unexpected becomes expected, it's already too late. It's already late. Yeah. It's already it's too, too late. It's too late. Oh, another show. It's another show with your coffee. With my coffee. I promise. Next Friday. Oh, no. Next Friday. No, we are not Friday. going to do a show next Friday. Yes. Because it is Good Friday. Right. So we and figured. We'll we take, thought it was a good idea. To take a good break. You thought it was a good idea to take a good break and say good day. And say good day, but it will feel Until. really good. It will feel <laughs> good when we come back. The in following two, Friday, yeah. Would it's anybody true. like us to stop now? Because yeah. that is probably. Will, we be, right. will you be in Arizona that next Friday? That no. was supposed to be no. the big Guys. You're not. You're not. You're not. No, you oh. won't be there anyway. It won't. No, that, it's not no. that Friday anyway. Yeah. It's not that Friday. But at some point soon, wind down. It, might, it could happen. It could happen at any time. Right but now, the thought of thing. I don't know how we're going to do the thing. Oh, I know how we do the thing. Okay. Okay. Thank I you very much, is. everybody. We hope this has delivered value to you. Have a great week, and we will see you in two weeks. And in if you're weeks. watching the replay, please, please share some comments. And if you have anything that you would like us to address, if you have any questions that you'd like Put to have on an upcoming wind down, um, I know we have a lot of fun, but at the core of all of this is some pretty serious business advice. So if you've got some, uh, it may be loud. But there is some very serious. <laughs> it's only because we want to make sure that you get this. We want to make sure that you hear it. Um, so um, <laughs> we will see you in a couple of weeks, everybody. Thank you for showing up. Uh, we love you all. Have a Jimmy great weekend. Us. Cheers. Great week. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> bye bye.